So this show is going to be a little different uh, than the other shows, which were, which were all a little different uh, than the previous shows. But this one is called Stand Like a Starfish, um, coded by Matt Dickin, coded by Jeremy Tessera. Uh, it is an autoethnography about panic disorder and living with it. Um, and it's an autoethnography because, as an anthropology major, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> well, it started, I don't remember when, but uh, these things just come on and you realize it when it's at its worst. Well, in eighth grade, uh, I remember not being able to stay in class. Hey, Jared, can you cue number one? So this show is one of the ways I use to cope. Number two, number two is uh, objects. Those could be placebos, like this, which I know it doesn't really look like a placebo, but uh, it's supposed to like make you feel good, or like your stomach, it's supposed to sell your stomach. 
And um, so I would drink these, still do, like every once a week at least, even though it's really bad for you. And it was a way to cope. So I thought I actually had more ginger ale bottles. Uh, it looked more, right, Chris, in my room? <laughs> it did. It did. Small uh, so I guess I'm not that unhealthy in any case. <laughs> I would just fill it back up with water and drink it throughout the week. But it's like the tiny ginger ale residue might help. In any case, <laughs> another way is um, anchors. Has anybody read It's Kind of a Funny Story or mm -hmm. seen the movie? Yeah. yeah so um, what Ned Bazzini, the late Ned Bazzini, writes about are anchors and tentacles. And anchors are things that hold you down, that keep you rooted. And tentacles are the things that you want to get away from. Uh, this song is called Anchors. <clears throat> that wasn't Anchors. No, <laughs> Trouble doubts, please believe me. Wishing storms don't deceive me. Lucky rabbit's foot, keep hanging on. I don't hear voices. I don't switch places. I don't have flashbacks, but something's wrong. You are not alone. You are not alone. Self talk and mantras guide my thoughts. Chords and words give it all you got. Cause it's a notion of catastrophic cognition. Worse in the dark with the repetitions The tentacles walk with my permission Sometimes I can't talk without wishing This would all go away Oh, hold on to your anchors You are not alone you are not alone Oh, hold on to your anchors You are not alone You are not alone For I once let them in The light is bright before sunrise Fake names, real eyes Realize too late Realize and self-hate My skin's a napkin Unfolded and tucked in for a second I am proud to be For a second I am proud to be Am I happy? Addicted to a feeling Conflicted and revealing to be wanted by an addict, an object full of purpose. Keep the windows open and let the numbers rush in to be sold for acceptance to all those dependent. For a second, I am. Oh 
for a second I myself in too many fucking things. Uh, <laughs> so, if you ask why I'm doing like all this shit, it's so that I don't have enough time to think. Um, that was too much time to think. Um, <laughs> so, I, uh, there's this book that I read called The Monkey Minds by Daniel Smith. It's one of my favorite books. Uh, and in it, there's a quote, and for my sound art project, I translated it into another language of sounds. And, uh, and the quote has to do with what the effects are of you know, doing too much and not having enough time for a social life, or having social life, but not really having social life, and how anxiety really manifests itself in relationships. So Jared Q2. For the anxious love, the most redemptive of experiences 
and the pinnacle of human relations is a hell of agonizing indecision, corrupted of joys, unreliable desires, unbearable self-realizations, and the most intense paradoxical loneliness and guilt, above all, guilt, implacable and vicious, because in love, an anxious person becomes a persecutor as well as a masochist. He doesn't intend to hurt anyone, least of all his beloved. He isn't a sadist, but he is toxic and merely by yielding to his affection he draws an innocent into the zone of pollution. Psychological self-abuse becomes psychological assault. In love, anxiety takes victims. For the anxious, love, the most redemptive of experiences and the pinnacle of human relations is a hell of agonizing decision, corrupted joys, unreliable desires, unbearable self-realizations, and the most intense paradoxical loneliness and guilt. Above all, guilt, implacable and vicious, because in love, an anxious person becomes a persecutor as well as a masochist. He doesn't intend to hurt anyone, least of all his beloved. He isn't a sadist, but he is toxic, and merely by yielding to his affection, he draws an innocent into the zone of pollution. Psychological self-abuse becomes psychological assault. In love, anxiety takes victims. from the concrete even though it's hard to break apart we cannot forget that we built the sidewalk above our buried beating hearts So that when we are stronger, we can open our gates and let the others in. I cannot control the feeling I get in my chest, but I know that it is truly different. I'm building walls not to keep you out but to keep me in right now my cannons are pointed out they're pointed in I'll sacrifice myself cause someone's gotta feel the pain I'll sacrifice myself let's minimize the casualties what if I hurt everyone, if I hurt everyone? What if I hurt everyone, if I hurt everyone? I'm building walls not to keep you out, but to keep me in. Right now, my cannons are pointed out, they're pointed in. So, uh, the future, 
So I've been talking about the effects and how I cope in the present, but I'm not talking about the future. Um, uh, using these methods of coping, I have been able to be happy. Also, Prozac helps. Um, thank you, comic relief, Jesus. <laughs> you guys are just so low. Um, I got two more songs for you, and uh, it's kind of about future. <coughs> oh shit, I'm sorry, it's a D minor. Without speaking, I am in awe at the way the light hits your cheek, and as long as the both of us keep on breathing, we are present, and there is meaning. Sometimes words are a diversion between our eyes and our nerves. With uncertainty, but you are only one person. <laughs> it's not your responsibility. And if for any reason we fight 
making it now, making it right. Would you rather me be a punching bag or a human with words I can fight back? Wouldn't you rather love someone with a spine who can lift you up higher? Okay, so what I just did um, <laughs> was what I do when I have a panic attack. If I'm in the right opportunity, it's an outlet, it's music. And um, when I can't do that, I have to turn to other things like quick relaxation techniques. And uh, <laughs> one that happens to work is standing like starfish. Woo! And um, <laughs> I'd like y'all Can you, uh, <laughs> two, three? All right, everyone get up. Stand like a starfish. So, arms straight out. Spine strengthened. Sternum strengthened. Stay rooted to the ground. Stare straight up at the ceiling. And just stretch.